Thank you for joining me in the video today. A little while back, I made a video titled Eight Members of the Clarinet Family That No Longer Exist, and one of those instruments that I talked about was the bass clarinet in C. Now, like most music historians, I assumed that this instrument was used somewhat in the beginning of the 19th century, but was eventually replaced by the bass clarinet in B flat, and by the start of the 20th century was obsolete. However, I recently found this. This is a buffet bass clarinet in the key of C. And there are a few buffet bass clarinets in the key of C in museums out there. However, this instrument is very unique. You see, this instrument was made around 1930, well after this instrument was presumed to be obsolete. And this instrument is even more unique in that it features relatively modern Burham system keyword, just like a Burham system bass clarinet of the time. So before this instrument uh, was found, I had no idea that something like this would have existed. The general presumption was that bass clarinets in C were obsolete by this point. However, here's an instrument that exists well past the point where it should have been extinct. So today I want to talk about this very strange and unusual instrument, talk about some of the quirks and features of it, and give you my thoughts and opinions about the instrument. So without further ado, let's get started. Now to start off, I'm just going to play a scale from low E to high C, just to give you an idea of the sound of this instrument. Now, one of the more unusual features of this instrument, as far as modern bass clarinets go, is the fact that it has two separate register vents. So, a lot of modern professional bass clarinets have what's known as an automatic double register vent mechanism, where it'll have two register vents, but it'll automatically switch between them. Well, like most bass clarinets from the 1930s, this instrument instead has two manual keys that you have to switch between. You can hear when I was playing the chromatic scale, I hesitate a little bit around E, and that's because I have to remember to switch uh, my thumb from one vent to the other. It's a little bit hard to get used to. I've heard some people, uh, once you practice a little bit, it, it kind of becomes second nature. But for me, I've never really had an instrument like this, so it takes a bit of getting used to. Another unusual feature of this instrument by modern standards is the range. So this bass clarinet only goes to low E. It really doesn't need to go any lower as the limited music for uh, bass clarinet in C that does exist really doesn't require any extended range. Um, you can hear it does make the tone of the B natural. A little bit different than the notes around it, but because the bell is slightly smaller than your average B flat bass clarinet, it's not too bad. And of course, the biggest quirk of this instrument is that it's in the key of C. Uh, you can see just by looking at it, it's quite a bit smaller than your average bass clarinet. In fact, the body itself is only about as long as the body of an alto clarinet. Uh, the neck looks like a bass clarinet neck, just a little bit flatter, a little bit less curved. And the bell looks again like a bass clarinet bell, but not quite as big. Other than that, the instrument is very similar to a bass clarinet at the time. It has a bore of 23.5 millimeters, just like many modern bass clarinets, and it uses any standard bass clarinet mouthpiece. In this case, I'm using my Van Dorn B50, which might be a little bit too open for the instrument. Ideally, you might want to use something with a little bit smaller tip opening, but this is just uh, what I'm used to, so it's what I'm, uh, I'm using with this instrument right now. Uh, other than that, I did uh, just recently overhaul this instrument I uh, still got a little bit of work to do just uh, quieting up some of the keys. You can hear a little bit of clicking, uh, but everything seals, and it's actually a really great playing bass clarinet. I, I don't know if that has to do with the fact, just because the bore is so wide relative to the length of the instrument, but it's extremely free-blowing, and it sounds uh, really quite, uh, I don't want to say bright, uh, but it doesn't sound uh, dead like a lot of uh, bass clarinets tend to be. Uh, overall, a really great instrument. It's a shame that this uh, member of the clarinet family had to die off, because I think there's a lot of potential here. So now I kind of want to talk about the story of how I got this instrument. Now, I've always been intrigued by some of the more rare and unusual members of the clarinet family. Uh, part of the reason why I made that video, eight members of the clarinet family that no longer exist. Uh, these instruments that were once created but are now obsolete just kind of fascinate me. 
uh, just from the history and the, uh, the quirkiness of them. And I've always kind of wanted a bass clarinet in the key of C because it seems like one of those instruments that uh, was somewhat used at some point but became obsolete. Um, and I have seen a few of them pop up in eBay, uh, but most of the ones I've seen have been uh, really old instruments with uh, simple system fingerings or German system instruments. Uh, there was a really cool one made by Mollenhauer that was essentially a bassoon-shaped bass clarinet uh, with a range to low C, which is pretty cool. But unfortunately, it was well above my budget, so I couldn't get it. Now, I did see a Burm system bass clarinet not too long ago, only a few months, uh, that was being sold by Reed and Squeak. It was an Adler. Uh, it looked a lot like this, actually, but it had a smaller bore and used a specific mouthpiece. It had an open hole for the, uh, uh, the, the, the left hand index finger. This one has the normal plate with a uh, vent hole for the altissimo, just like you would see on a modern bass clarinet. Uh, I tried to get that instrument, but unfortunately somebody got it before me. Uh, so I was really bummed about that. But I was browsing eBay France one day, and I happened to see a buffet bass clarinet for sale. It was priced around uh, $2,000 uh, US after uh, shipping and taxes. Uh, quite a bit for a vintage bass clarinet, but just the look of this instrument made me realize something was off. The, the big thing that tipped me off is the, the distance between the first and second pad cups on the lower joint. You can see there's, they're very close together. On a normal bass clarinet, there's a, quite a bit of distance between these two pad cups, but uh, that kind of tipped me off that something was different. And of course, the angle of the neck, uh, how much it's bent, um, looked really different from a normal bass clarinet. So uh, on a whim, I decided to buy it, and I really lucked out because not only is it in the key of C, but it's also tuned perfectly around 440, which is great. So it's modern pitch. So if I wanted to, I could play it with an ensemble or with a group. Um, now, just looking at the design of this instrument, uh, it actually it looks like a lot of the, the, uh, the pad cuts on the arms are pretty much the same as the, the buffet bass clarinets of the era. It's just that a lot of the rods are shortened to accommodate for the, uh, the smaller instruments. And the, uh, the tone poles are quite a bit smaller too than a normal bass clarinet. Um, yeah, so I got really lucky uh, finding this. I, I did do a little bit of research on bass clarinets and C in general. It seems there are a few uh, Selmers floating around. In fact, uh, Jason Alder pointed out that the uh, some of the 1920s catalogs for uh, Selmer, they did offer bass clarinets in both B flat and in C, which is really fascinating. I've, I've heard of a few of those floating around, but again, I've never seen a buffet. So yeah, it's a very intriguing and fascinating instrument. I'm really excited to show you guys. So uh, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about this very quirky and unusual instrument. I'll probably be keeping this in my collection just because of the, the rarity and the historical value. Um, sometimes I'll get instruments and sell them, but this one I think is going to be one I keep. It's just too cool and unusual. Uh, hopefully you'll see it again in a future video. All right, thanks everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day.